<laughs> yes, welcome. I'm sure you've uh, heard us make racket uh, yeah. <laughs> next door. But uh, yes, it's nice so to this have is you. What's on. going on? Yes, this yeah, is this, what, is, this, is, this is that on. noise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay. um, and the music? What do you stop and play music? Uh, just no, that's just me being annoying. <laughs> Not yet. Don't encourage Not yet, him, Alex. Yeah. Don't encourage uh, him. There might be a segue for that. Mm. Maybe mm. <laughs> we'll look into yeah, it. We'll look into it. We'll look into it. Um, but yeah, Alex, um, herbalist, author, teacher, general, miracle worker. Um, <laughs> is there anything you can't do, Alex? Is there anything you can't do? Um, uh, listen, I, I don't recognise the fellow that you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, yeah, before we, before we get too much into it, um, and we talk about, you know, what you do, um, your amazing life. Um, I just wanted to touch on something um, that was slightly more personal to me and, and something that I hope people might be able to relate to now in the current times and situation with COVID and everything. Um, it's, it's a, it, forgive me, but it's a bit of a, it is a personal thing, so I might come out wrong and That's stumble it. and stuff, but um, it's something that came to you about two years ago. I'm mm -hmm. oh, sorry, about a year ago um, to talk about. Uh, and I was noticing that I was having quite um, extreme anxiety, um, somatic OCD, um, and hyper awareness. Um, I wasn't eating, I wasn't sleeping, I was stressed. Um, and you very quickly brought to light that the routes that I had originally gone down, which was the traditional go to your consultant, go to your NHS get antidepressants or whatever wasn't working um and it very quickly brought to light to me a life lesson that I think will be helpful for a lot of people which was in most cases it's a mental situation that you need to fix prior to going down those medicative routes mm -hmm. um so yeah that that very that just that lesson alone changed my whole aspect on mental health, changed my whole aspect on health altogether. Um, and yeah, it's something that I think a lot of people could learn from. So, and, and doing a lot more research since then, do, spending a lot of time, uh, investing a lot of time into my own mental health and in, investing a lot of time into understand what those areas were that were making me feel those symptoms. Um, and like I say, we probably only had one or two sessions mm -hmm. talking about it. Um, but it, made a big difference just understanding how much of an impact mm. your current situation or your current day-to-day -day lifestyle and, and diet can affect mm -hmm. your mental well-being yeah um which of course segues nicely into what you do <laughs> yeah i mean I, and it's really interesting because I, I i'd like to talk about that because yeah. um you know we as human beings we have to maintain an internal balance and and in, and a balance with our environment, and our internal balance. You know, maintaining our internal balance places particular stresses on 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 our bodies, our metabolism, and maintaining our external balance also places stresses on the same thing. So we have our relationships, and our, remember that our psychology was formed in the kinds of relationships that we grew up around. Right, the first person we will usually know is our mother. Mm -hmm. And from the mother, we really learn how to be loved. Right? You, you, learn if you're you, you learn the sense of whether you're worthy of love. And then often the father provides limits. Okay? So sometimes your mom, she might, sometimes, sometimes your mom might threaten you with your father, right? Yeah. Um, some moms don't need to do that. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, so you get a sense of, of so what, but the point is that within the relationships we have, the way that our personalities are formed happens. Mm. And, um, and at different stages as we grow, we face different growth challenges right so when you when you um below three it's about being able to move around and being able to have a relationship with things the first thing you do is stick everything in your mouth 
Yeah. Cause, <laughs> and, and so and then you begin to hold them and you be you know so so those growth challenges of the different periods, right? So then you cross three, usually um the focus is on on communicating. So 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 the pressures you face on those growth challenges really shape the way that you will relate to the world. And we call that your psychosocial health. Right? So you can't separate your psychology from your social situation. Mm. And you can't separate that from the kinds of stresses. Because if you're facing those situations whilst you are struggling, you know, maybe you've got malnutrition and you're struggling with that, you don't have energy, then all of those things will shape you. Um, and then uh, each type a person, you know, one of the things I, I, talk, I, I love to talk about, I write about, personality, personality or biotypes. Mm. So each type naturally has its own orientation for how it deals with the world. And so you're most, so each type is then most susceptible to certain types of stresses. Mm. So, uh, so when you grow up, you're exactly in the same situation. You because you, throughout <coughs> your life you, you face different challenges, right? Once you get into your, let's say you you you, you cross into the twenties, you kind of you want to establish yourself economically in the world. You want to have a relationship, right? So, before you were looking for a girlfriend, it starts to move as you get through the twenties, to perhaps looking for something more permanent. So we have these growth challenges. So when when those challenges themselves are are thwarted or made incredibly difficult, then there are certain there are certain aspects of the human life cycle that also get thwarted, and that will affect our psychology. Our psychology is in our body, so since it's happening in our body, right? It's also affecting the way our bodies are. So you can't separate them at all. Mm. So when somebody comes with depression and anxiety, that means that a lot of the body's fail-safe mechanisms have already failed. Okay? And then at that point, if you only treat that with um, psycho... You know, psych uh, uh, psych um, antipsychotics or antidepressants, you're not actually dealing with the person. How are they going to deal with the psychosocial press mm. challenges? How do they deal with the growth challenges? Yeah. Okay. Um, so then they're taking that, but those re still remain. So then what happens, what can happen is you need more and more and more medication because you haven't solved the problem. So my method of treating people is to help them to recognize, look, you need to deal with your... I, I, am, I can help you understand how to deal with your problem. Mm. But it's your problem. Yeah. It's not mine. Yeah. It's, you know, your dramas, every, they're yours. Yeah. Right? You uh, need to take responsibility for yeah. how you've got to this situation. Yeah, or... or or Because uh, sometimes you have no power over how you got... Yeah. You know, how you yeah, got to true, the situation, yeah. but yeah. you're in the situation. So now what you have power over is what I'm going to do next. <laughs> yeah. Mm. So this guy, and you know, he just went. He just dis he just went. Mm. Yeah. You know, he left. Then you maybe you see him ten years later. He said, "No, you spoke. To I left. I went." <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's it's th that's really it. Yeah. And I and I do realize that um, I was in a situation where I was able to take control of changing it, uh, changing my lifestyle, changing my habits. Cutting back on certain aspects of, like for example, work and stress and whatever, um, and I appreciate you know a lot of people don't have that privilege, um, but based on what you you, I know you're not doing you're doing as much herbalist stuff now. At um, all. Not as much. I not mean, as I, much. I treat on Sundays. Yeah. So, so yeah. Um, if I wasn't in that situation to change that, would you then treat with herbal remedies or how does that work? Well. You get the person who comes, they have a conversation, and they go off and do something. Then you get the person whose situation is more knotted. So at that point, you might sit down and talk to them. But you, 
basically you're giving medication to aid that person on their life journey. Mm. Right? That's the reason why you're giving medication. So the conversations are to help them to be able to unknot their own situation. You're not unknotting it for them. Right? Um, and then so that they can do, because there's always something you can do. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it might that, be just like going to bed half an hour earlier yeah. or there's always there's always and one thing always leads to another yeah so one of the aspects of man is that when he's overwhelmed he has a t he has a capacity to lose hope mm. so the thing for my for thing is is to, is to help people to recognize their power that you know you are alive you have breath God has given you a power, so use it, right? Mm. So nice, you can use it to say no. Sometimes there's a situation that you're in, you know, like you might be in a relationship, and you can't leave, but you can withdraw your energy, okay? Mm. And often when you withdraw mm. your energy, the other person leaves because they recognize it's just, it's, 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 they're no longer getting what they, they're no longer getting what, because so, you know, sometimes people can be really dysfunctional. Mm -hmm. So the dysfunction is, I am looking for something, and you're giving it to me. So mm -hmm. if you withdraw your energy, then they're looking for something, and they can't get it. So even if they're violent or whatever, they're still not going to get it. So they leave. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Uh, one thing I did that was just personally worked for me very well, um, I took either a physical or a mental diary, day to day, what I did. Mm -hmm. Just wrote down, when I woke up, what the, what the first thing I did, what it was the first thing I did at work, um, you know, who I'd speak to in the day, whether it be you know, business or personal, when I go back, what I'd eat, when I go to bed, when I'd feel tired. And just from knowing that, I think one of the main things you said to me was, because you noticed straight away that day that I was just so tired, and you could mm -hmm. just notice by looking at me how tired I was. Note down in the day when you first yawn. Mm -hmm. And when you first actually feel tired, because that's probably the time you should be going to sleep, and that to me just blew my mind because it, it didn't you, know, you just take for granted actually when yeah. you feel tired you shouldn't just yeah. go to bed well, at the same should, time you should go when you feel tired it's your it's your body's way of saying you need sleep yeah that's literally what you know when you yeah. yawn it's your body's way of saying right we need rest yeah it's just the same as like when your stomach rumbles yeah. your body's way of telling you right yeah, you need some nutrients yeah. you know you need to go and eat but we yeah. often ignore stuff because. Well, we make excuses, yeah. and it's this whole human thing of yeah. I know better, and I'll eat when I want, and I'll go sleep when I want, and yeah. then we do that again and again and again, day after day, week after week, month after month, and think yeah. it's going to have no toll yeah. on yeah. us physically <laughs> or mentally, and yeah. we're going to be absolutely fine, and then yeah. you come to sort of a year, two years, three years down the road from doing those bad habits day in, day out, mm -hmm. and you're suddenly like, oh, I, I can't do this. I can't sustain this. Yeah, yeah this is an issue yeah. that, that needs to change. But yeah. just going back to people that suffer from mental health, from anxiety, whenever people are faced, and you sort of have, I always feel like anyone that struggles with those two things, you come to a point where you realise you have to accept that, right, I've got it. Mm. So I've got anxiety or I've got mental health. But the problem is then I find is a lot of people want the quick fix, which is why I believe a lot of people go straight on to antidepressants. Yeah. Because they think I'm going to take this pill, this happy pill, as yeah. a lot of people or, like or to call things. it, yeah. or, what, or, or whatever else, yeah. because they want that quick and easy fix yeah. instead of working through the problem, instead yeah. of accepting I've got a problem, it's not going to go away it's not going to go away overnight because I didn't get it overnight. Mm. You don't just wake up one day and suddenly you're depressed. It's years and years of, mm. of mental torture, as anyone that's got depression knows. The same with anxiety. So it's knowing I've got the issue, but also moving forward, how can I improve without doing anything drastic? Because I think going from one day not taking any prescription to then for the next three to five years being on nothing but antidepressants it's a, it's a drastic change to your life like that's not a normal thing to do you can't mm. expect you to change nothing in your life apart from taking pills and for that issue to go away so i just feel as though people just they look at they look at very very short-term solutions for long-term problems yeah. and that's a massive issue surrounding yeah. mental health and anxiety and 
What do you always, when people first come to you, Alex, and they say <clears> to you, you know, I've got depression, I've got anxiety, what's the, what's the first thing you look at in terms of your response to them? I, I, have, I just have a conversation. Yeah. I enter into a conversation. I, get, I try and get them to, I help them to relax. And I get them to talk to me about the texture of their lives. Yeah. Right, because the thing about it is I don't want to have to tell them that that's what you have. Yeah. I want them to realize, I want to say things that help them to realize yeah. that, oh, wait a minute, that's strange. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I definitely yeah. had that moment. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Because you know, as I remember when I started out as, I remember when I started out doing work as a <clears throat> healer. I thought that I was there to heal. What I we very quickly began to realize is that the body and the the, the human being naturally wants to heal anyway yeah i just have to help them to recognize that pattern in themselves or recognize those impulses in themselves so the conversation is so that you start to okay wait a minute ah and and so you can go away and the things you can you you actually realize okay i can do this i can do that and you start doing that so yeah. that the that's the conversation so the conversation will be like how are you you know do you get here? Um, you know, what do you do? And just open questions, just questions like that. And we start to talk. A lot of times, actually, in the clinic, we spend a lot of time giggling. Yeah. Because what will happen, is, another thing is is, is that um, the, our, as human beings, we have, we have something we call the autonomic nervous system, which governs the way that your body responds. It governs automatic responses. So when Lawrence, when you were, when you came, you were in, you were half between a flight mode and a trapped mode. So mm -hmm. your body was doing that. So like you sat down, you didn't sit back and relax. You were slightly forward, you know, there were all of these things going on. Mm. Um, and, and then one of the things that happens is when you're in that mode is that the, the, the texture of your skin changes because the, the capillaries in the skin start to contract. So the skin gets, gets a bit, you know, it gets a bit pale mm. and so on. So these are the signs that you recognize. So at that point, what you need to do is to get the person to have another autonomic response and a great autonomic response is just a laugh, mm. <laughs> right? Yeah. So they have a problem. And they realize, God, I'm doing that. Wait a minute, do I actually do that? Yeah. Actually, I do. What the? <laughs> you, no, seriously. <laughs> yeah. 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 And they start laughing. <laughs> so the relationship with that thing changes, right? <laughs> so it's really the the, the 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 relationship is a relationship of 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 calling out mm. their own healer. Yeah, and and Sorry, if I, I if I go back a bit, because I remember I I, I was born in in London. Mm -hmm. uh, my parents took me to Guyana, where my family is from, when I was three. And I sp I spend a lot of time with my grandfather. And every day, before sunset, so like the hour before sunset, my grandfather would sit on his veranda. And we sit down and we just stare. And the conversation should be like this. Hmm. I wonder where he's going. Hmm. And then maybe this, it's a bird would move in the sky and look. But it, after years later, I started doing yoga. I realized, wait a minute, this was a meditation. Yeah. Culturally, we don't call it that. But yeah. that was every day. And, and what happens? You sit there, and as you're sitting there, you start to reflect. So, what really struck me when I was in, when I came back to to Europe, or I visit the United States, is that that really wasn't part of the general experience of people. So the tools you because that that capacity to reflect when you're in difficulty, if you've tasted it regularly. You seek it out. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So you might go and sit by the river, sit by the river for like four hours or something, and then you get up and you got up to do something about it, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. Definitely. So so what's happened is that in structuring modern life, we've thrown out many of the things which came naturally and then and then we go we go oh we need to find out about meditation from india or something like that and and that's great right yeah but there are things that have been in in that are part of every can i use the word indigenous culture the people of a place and and what's happened is we've really devalued those things and we haven't made use of them so you know and then we have to go to get something that's really structured. And there's nothing wrong with yoga. I practice yoga myself, and, and I still do. But I'm saying that you'll find many, 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 many things that were culturally part of people that have been they've, been, they've been rooted out. And they are part of the things that people make people more robust, you know, that help people to, to reflect and to change direction. Because if you're not happy with the situation... Change it. Mm. Make changes. Yeah, and I think people don't realize how much their situation is actually reflecting on them. Hmm. Like directly. Yeah. Yeah. Like your day to day, come back if you're, if you're, for example, unhappy in work, mm-hmm. you're coming back. Yeah, you might be able to rant about it to your spouse or whoever for 30 minutes, but that's not really reflecting on it as much as you need to to yeah. let that negativity out is it yeah. mm. i always just think when i talk to people about the difficulties in everyday life and they tell me about their lifestyle and tell me they were ridiculous hours you've been there yourself lawrence you've told me you used to sleep at the office and just it was just work 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 constantly and then eat and then sleep and every single time I talk to someone and they've got this hectic lifestyle, I always think to myself in my head, but when, when are you taking time out for yourself? Mm. How often do you sit there at home and you just by yourself? You're what, not you on your phone. You deserve time of your own? Watching. What do you mean? Do you Alex? deserve time of your own? I mean, you know, seriously? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, exactly, exactly. That's what yeah. people act like. They yeah. act like... They, they have to constantly be doing something. Yeah. It's like, I know people that feel bad when they have to... St- stay in mm. you know if they don't feel up to something if they don't want to leave the house to go to a party if they don't want to go to the pub if they don't want to meet up for a drink they build up this guilt mm. because they they feel as though they need to people please and they can't have days to themselves where they're just sat at home mm. they're just sat at home i can't even even in the even in the like i say i took, went on holiday last year yeah and just absolute bliss nothing to do is in a, a place where i've been hundreds of times before, so yeah. it's not like I had any sort of anxiety of being there or worrying about going about, hide a car, whatever. And still, sitting around the pool with nothing at all to do, I was punishing myself. Inside, punishing myself for not working, not doing something, even if it was sweeping up. And I'd have to go, and I'd because it was my mum and dad's sort of, you know, shared apartment, or whatever. I'd have to go upstairs onto the roof terrace and sweep, sweep up because I needed to physically be doing something how crazy is that i couldn't just sit down and i and, and on the time very rare occasion that i do finally relax i love it it's not that i don't really like like relaxing or yeah. like binging tv or yeah. resting or reflecting or whatever but it's just yeah. struggling to do it because you're so used to putting yourself in that same mindset of working yeah but that's half right in is that your work time and your leisure time they're both just as important yeah and that's what a lot of people don't get. Yeah. You can work, 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 80 hours a week, 100 hours a week if you mm-hmm. want. But if you don't have that damn time, you're going to burn out. And yeah. it again comes into that, I'm a human and I'm indestructible and I can just work, work, work. We're not machines. Yeah. We're humans. We're not machines. And some people treat themselves like they are machines mm-hmm. and they can be on the go all the time. Mm-hmm. And then when they are suddenly faced with backlash or they are faced with, uh, overwhelming feeling they don't know how to handle they start acting Shop. suspicious oh, you know and, they're, and yeah. they're like oh yeah. my this isn't me this like isn't no I can, I can keep <laughs> going like i don't need rest i don't need to stop i can work yeah. seven days a week do you know what i mean yeah. so when people say stuff to me like oh i've been on holiday but they've still done work 
that's not a holiday. Mm. No holiday should involve work, mm. you know? So when people have, like, the days off, those days are, that's the point, to be off. Mm. No work-related stuff, no stress, no being on the phone. I understand if you've got your own business, you're going to have to check in and you might get calls throughout the day, <clears> but <throat> your sole focus on those days off should be to just spend time with yourself. Yeah. That's it. And a lot of people don't do that. A lot of people really do struggle with that. It's very interesting, though. Very interesting. You know, the Greeks, their thing was that change came in leisure. Yeah. So there's times when you're doing things, but reflection and transformative change is dependent upon leisure. If not, then because of the nature of the mind, is the mind, you know, the, the, the mind bring, puts together rational narratives, okay? So it says, okay, if I do this, then I get that. And if you get that, then I have three, three options. I take this one, da, 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 da. So then what you end up with is a life that's based upon that. It's linear. But the, the nature <coughs> of leisure, because the, they had two, they looked at two aspects of time. So time, chronos, is, is when, when um, one event leads to another. And then there was another word for time which had to do with timing, which comes from weaving. I don't know if you've ever seen people weaving, but you have to throw the bobbit, the thread through, and that's timing, right? Mm. So that came from that. So what happened, and, and their whole idea was that this thing of timing like that was... You know, like if you, like like when it, you know you see these things where people would enter the underworld and so on, it was about timing, right? And so they they knew that real transformative change came from that leisure, but in what happened is that it it you you cut through the linear, right? So you could be here and then you end up all the way over there because it's completely changed direction, right? And that is the role of leisure. Without that then you're like a hamster on the wheel. Yeah. You, you just fall one step to the other, one step to the other. No. It's a good long walk, sitting, even dreaming, you know, sometimes you, sometimes, um, you know, in learning about how you are, I, I, yesterday, I was really tired. And when I'm tired, one of the first signs is I don't make my bed. So I, once I see I don't make my bed, the next one is I was really tired because I was eating all the time. So what do you do when you're tired? What do you do when you're tired? Sleep. Yeah. So I closed my office because I was in my office. Yeah. And I took a cushion. Yeah. And I went to sleep. <laughs> so when I woke up an hour later, yeah. I wasn't hungry. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, I would have been beating myself in the ear and I lazy behind me beating myself. Oh, God. Why, why are you so greedy? I'm not greedy. I'm tired. <laughs> and I'm looking for energy. So, and you want to eat. What do you want to eat? You want carbs. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it's re really this whole. Thing. So, so the point is, is that leisure allowed me to recognize things like that. Mm. Right. So, so look, I could have been battling with. Okay. So why am I tired? Then I could have been battling with. Yeah, and why am I so greedy? Hmm. No, but what I did is sleep. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. one very simple solution. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it cut all of that, all of that that linearity, it just cut it out. Hmm. So yeah. Simple. I mean it's 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 very yeah, there's it's you have to be you have to be ruthlessly honest with life. Hmm. Because life is real. Uh, it's real. And when you, when you're talking to someone and they've identified or not identified the problem and they've not made a change and they come back to you and they've not made a change and they keep coming back, what then do you do? Okay, well, there's a point where you just say, oh, you know, I can't, I can't help you if you can't figure out the problem or. Well, it's slightly different. I mean, look, people are like this. They, they, they get into some zones. I call. I mean, there's one in which the, the people have come and they've come to dump their bucket of shit in your bucket. Yeah. 
because it relieves them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then they come back later to dump their bucket of shit. Yeah, it's like they're passing on their issues to other people. Yeah. And yeah. So they don't intend to do anything about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But they came to dump the shit. So, so what I've learned to do is uh, I might let you dump your shit once. I might let you dump your shit another time. But after that, you're not dumping any shit anymore. <laughs> so you come and I just turn my bucket upside down. So you make a choice. You're either going to do something about it or maybe you need to go and spend a bit more time reflecting and come back when you're ready, right? But the point is that in that real, if you're coming and paying me to to help you to heal, you need to be ready to heal. I don't want your money if you're just coming to dump your shit. Yeah, go to the pub. You can do it there. Yeah. Mm. Um, but the the point is that the point is that really what you do is you hold a space within you have to hold a space open within which people can see themselves then sometimes you get a situation where it's too painful to look yeah and sometimes you might give them some herbs and say okay look go away come back 3 months later because you give them and, and the herbs might help them to resolve some of those things and what type of herbs help what things? Hmm. Like herbal tea. Um, y- usually, I, I I do this thing. I mean, how I do it. I mean, you can deliver herbs in many ways. Yeah. Um, the way I would do it, I I, I grind them. I get them ground ground into powders. You take a teaspoon. You throw some hot water on it. You leave it to cool, and you drink it. Okay, but there are a family of herbs which are called mints. They're from the mint family, so you get mint. <coughs> Rosemary is from that family. Lavender is from that family. Um, sage is from that family. And um, they're quite aromatic. What they do is they, 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 they give circulation and they open up the periphery and they let the blood rise or they let the blood go. And sometimes they will drain. They have different qualities. But generally, if people are stuck in an emotional state, one of the lower emotional states, mints work wonders for shaking that past. Because remember, I was talking about your emotions. When you when you have an emotion, when you have a feeling of it, okay, where do you feel joy? If, if you could just touch where you feel joy normally, or anger. <laughs> I, did, see? I did know where. <laughs> <laughs> I did not know where you were going to touch that, Lawrence. No, but that almost was, everybody yeah. does this. Yeah. 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 Because your Real emotions joy. are an autonomic yeah. response. They're an automatic response. So, and they match with people. That's why you know, people will talk about how anger mm. and the liver. Right? I mean, you, know, you go to Africa, you go to, to Asia, you, you, you read about the Greeks, you, 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 know, you go to, 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 to the Americans. You know, even in Britain, you see it's liverish, mm. right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, everybody does so because because yeah. emotions are felt yeah. around certain places. Anger in the belly, isn't it? Fire in the belly. Fire in the yeah. belly. Yeah. Mm. So, what what these herbs to, to help to do is they help to dis, to dislodge a stuck autonomic response. That's when you're using them like that. So that's how I would use them. Right. So often I will, you know, as I could see that somebody is not really grounded, so I give them herbs that will ground them. And then I'll, I'll look to work out, okay, is this, gr- is this lack of grounding, is it because of maybe tension in the nerves? Or is this a lack of energy? What do you and mean so by on. grounded, not really reflecting, just... You know, sometimes you, 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 you're everywhere else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just can't be in your body. Yeah, yeah. And you don't have a sense of being firmly fixed. Hmm. That's what I mean. Yeah. So the herbs, the, part the, the way that herbs work allows you to address that. So I, 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 um, I spent a lot of time looking at autonomic responses because I wanted to match the tradition to what we know, what we know in our modern world. And so because I was interested in, I'm interested in medicine. You know, people talk about uh, alternative medicine or orthodox medicine 
yeah, that's great if you're a pharmaceutical company or whatever. But somebody comes to me, they just want to get well. Yeah. They don't really care. Yeah. yeah. Right? <coughs> so I, I, I've been, one, one of the things I've had, tried to do is very ruthless about addressing the problem with the tools on hand and understanding the problem with the knowledge on hand. Yeah. So this whole thing of the autonom of, of the autonomy I found really useful. So I, I I I use that a lot. So I use herbs which will address those states and shift that. So sometimes somebody's feeling trapped, you'll give them something that will help with that and build up um, the, the this there's a thing I call the neuroendocrine core. I think we spoke about that. Yeah, I think yeah. Yeah, because basically when you have your stress response your stress response, um, which is just called the HPA axis, right, which means that your adrenals, which is a little gland, which is based like a cashew nut on top of your kidneys, it sends out hormones, or, or it can be stimulated to send out hormones. And, and there's a communication that happens with a, with a gland in your head, which is called the hypothalamus, and then another one which is a bit lower down in the brain, which is called the pituitary and the hypothalamus <coughs> and the pituitary maintain the the, the integrity of, mm. of of the hormonal action, and then the and then the adrenals deliver the stress hormone. So when your body is is is, in a, is dealing with a stress response, then the other axes are downgraded, and energy is given to that one. So what are the other main axes? It's one is the reproductive one, which is called the HPG, which is the gonads, mm -hmm. right? So gonads are testicles or ovaries. So, and then the next one is 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 the um, is the thyroid, which really uh, deals with other organs, with or other glands, and hormones, which deal with metabolism. So what happens is that when you're stressed. Reproductive function and metabolic function don't get don't work well. they're, 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 they get they get less energy, <clears throat> right? So eventually, what will happen is that they themselves become they become dysregulated or unregulated, right? So they, they can't find a balance. So you, then you'll de you'll, ref you'll you'll manifest a disease state, you develop a disease state. So one of the things I like to I, I in, in my methodology I address. <coughs> is really strengthening that neuroendocrine core mm. so that um so that those systems can can rebalance themselves and when when the hypothalamus pituitary um function is really becomes begins to become damaged that's when depression and anxiety start to happen because basically you've got You've got, you've got something called the limbic brain, which is responsible for emotions, which is in mammals. And so what the limbic brain now is, tr is trying to do is put some brakes on you. Okay? So you, you find you're scared. You find nonspecific anxiety. Yeah. I'm worried about this. It's just trying to put brakes on you. Mm. Right? So when you give it, and you give somebody um, and, um, drugs to deal with the anxiety without addressing this, then... Often, the break is off. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So they yeah. continue. Yeah. So yeah. they go deeper into the problem. So there's, uh, and that's not to say that sometimes <coughs> these are not appropriate. There are times when I've gone to people, you need to go to see a psychiatrist, and you need to get some medication. Yeah, yeah. And I've dealt with somebody recently with that, and they did. I think when they realized what the what what the medication in, was going to entail for the change of their lives. They came back and they said, "Look, I want to deal with things," mm. and, and and they took them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a lot to it, isn't there? There's a lot to it, <laughs> but it's what scares me is is that people they've just not done enough research. I don't think they're aware of how many different types of medication there are. Absolutely, yeah. I think they immediately yeah, just think, absolutely. I'm depressed, yeah, antidepressants, so antidepressants yeah, or yeah. counselling. Yeah, you absolutely. know, like, oh, yeah. mate, the amount of people we spoke to that mm. suffer, I bet 90% of them, even myself included, mm. mate, I've, yeah. never looked into, I've never looked into herbs yeah. myself. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm. I've looked into other stuff. I've tried counselling. I've 
don't want to go anywhere near antidepressants, yeah. but I've not researched anywhere near mm. enough as I should be doing. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because I do want to, I, I do want to improve as a person, and I don't want to do anything that's drastic or anything that is going to make me drowsy, yeah, or feel different. Do you know what I mean? Or just be a temporary. Exactly. Just be yeah. a temporary little fix and. Yeah, I've smiled now, so that problem sort yeah. of gone, and I'm yeah. able to just get back to my day to day routines. Mm. That must mean everything's good, and then comes back mm. around on you, and then you're right where you were. It's getting to a point where you can think clearly, reflect well yeah, enough exactly. to make a, in most cases, a simple decision yeah. to change it, change your situation. I think that is the main point. What you just said there is understanding. Yeah, just to start with. Understanding it, yeah. get, get a good understanding of how you currently feel now, get a good understanding of exactly what it is that you're putting on yourself so that you can choose to make a decision mm. from there. But yeah, you touched on um, personality types there. Is it bio? No, b- yeah, biotypes. Biotypes, yeah, um, which is in your book, Know Yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, could you tell us a bit more about that? Oh, well, I, can, I can also show you the books. I mean, yeah, that would be great, yeah. So that's oh, camera. Yeah, that's know yourself. It's available at Amazon. So mm-hmm. that's one. Yeah, we're going to put the link for yeah, all your books oh, and wonderful. stuff in the description. So yeah, and then so there's so there are types. So this is the one that's supposed to come out, which I'm still working on. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but so the books are called Know Yourself, and um, you know when. I, as you you see, I'm a, I'm very fond of the Greeks, I'm really fond of the Greeks, and when you went to see the Delphic Oracle above the 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 temple, was the was the, the saying know yourself, mm. yeah, and so I wrote this book know your these this series of books know yourself, because I wanted to give people. Some something from a tradition I had received of how do you understand your the patterns of, of, of yourself as a human being and that human beings have patterns and that in your relationships with others you can predict pretty much the pattern of what they will do. You won't be able to predict precisely what they will do but the pattern of what they will do. So it helps you to improve relating. So this system, which I received from Sufism, but which also um, existed amongst the Greeks, uh, uh, was known as the, the Four Temperaments. And the story of how this happened, right? Because the Greeks had this philosopher called Empodocles. And Empodocles was brilliant. Somehow he died by jumping into a volcano. I don't know what happened. He must have had a bit of an <laughs> oversight. Just walking or the dog. <laughs> maybe, maybe, you know, maybe he had a, a, a pill too many or something. I don't know what happened, right? But Empodocles came up with this whole thing, and it and it it was a it was a knowledge which actually existed before him, but he really codified it. He called them, he called them what he called stoichian, which means roots so he said existence is from four roots right and the four roots were earth wind water and fire and that if you understood those roots you could see the pattern of anything so when the romans took that they translated stoichian which means roots as elementum means elements yeah and then um they also so then from element from that came the whole idea of temperaments so the what the romans did is they changed something which was really quite energetic right into something that was was quite segmented yeah so so um my work was really about really Rest- restituting the energetic aspects of mm. this, right? Um, which still existed, but I, 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 anyway, so, so if you, so in that understanding, each season, 
gives the is a representation of that energy. It's an expression of that energy. So summer, the nature of summer is fire, mm -hmm. right? The nature of fire is it heats things up and it moves them. What do people do in summer, right? <laughs> yeah. If you got fruits on the tree in summer, you want to pick them. You say, oh, get the tree. You need to pick those fruits or they'll go rotten, right? So you find people of the f of, of that who have a harmony with summer, they'll tell you, have you done this? Mm -hmm. Did you do that? But and then you know, and, and they mm. badger you when they want something done. Assertive. Yeah, they're assertive. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, but they badger you. Yeah. Yeah. When they want something just to get them off your backs. Yeah. Yeah. You do it. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Again, no comment. <laughs> no name drops. No comments. I'm only surrounded by lovely patient people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. mm. So that, that for Empodocles was going, okay. So here, here's fire. Here's how the same pattern, you see it right through existence, right? So then you pick the fruits and it's autumn. So the element, or, or the root of earth, which is, because right, it now it's getting cooler. So fire dries things out and then they get cold, earth. So um, the earth, the earth energy now. Things are calming down. They're slowing down. They want to think things through because we're going to go from summer into a cold season. So we need to put things away. Yeah. So they like to put things away. They love to catalog. They know you know they have a place for things. And. Uh, and they prepare. And they can tend to be a bit pessimistic. So since they're pessimistic, they over prepare. So you can be you can guarantee being prepared with the earth people, right? And they're called melancholics. Also, they have a tendency to um to procrastinate. So you get this thing, they're over prepared, but they procrastinate. Why do they procrastinate? They procrastinate because they're looking and they want to do things perfectly. So they're always waiting for the opportunity to do it perfectly. So oh, should I start? No, no, I start thinking, oh, no, no, if I did it like that, and then if I did it like that, and then if I had that, oh, no, 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 and do I have that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the earth person, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then harmony with autumn. So winter's coming, so they need to store it. So they can tend, sometimes it can be a bit stingy, you know, and they go, Okay, where's that thing I gave you last week? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so then we move from autumn now and we get into winter. Winter's still cool. The leaves are off the tree. It's damn cold. You don't want to move. You want to stay close to the water. So you want to, th if you're going to do something, you want to think about what you're going to do. Uh, do I really need to go out today? Did you see that ice outside? Do I really? And then if people are trying to force you to do it, you, huh, you couldn't be bothered. And that pretty much matches the energy of the, the, the winter person. It's just like mine. They tend to be a bit round-faced. Yeah. People might call them lazy, but it's not laziness, actually. It's that, do I really need to do that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and if you're trying to force them to do something, they slip through your fingers like water. And what's the element? Water. Water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so pinning, yeah. pinning, pinning them down, them is, down is hard deep. work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and often... The, the summer people, they often marry the water people. <laughs> so they <Yeah>. go mad. <laughs> yeah. It's funny you say that because uh, I think I'm a summer, or I know it's not the same, but I mean, actually, is it similar to astrology and uh, star signs? Well, star signs, uh, they, they employ that, <clears throat> but in a very different way, slightly <clears throat> different way. But they, it's more difficult. Yeah. 
So I'm not going to go there because it's yeah, more difficult. Yeah, that's all yeah. different. <laughs> that's Next all time, Alex. Yeah. Next time, Alex. <laughs> uh, yeah. So now we're, 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 we've dipped. With, so we've got one more to do, right? Yeah. So we start to head into spring. So in spring, whew, the birds are out. The flowers are coming. Everything is singing. The breeze is nice and, and warm. <laughs> and, uh, and that's them. Yeah. Yeah, so they, 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 they come out and they you know, they like to communicate. Some you know, spring people love to talk. Yeah. <laughs> and Are you thinking think of people throughout <laughs> yeah. <laughs> every single time yeah. Alex says it though, like, I know I that. Know. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> yeah. So what they do now is 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 um, they love to talk, but they think, you know, spring at the the fruits are coming and the tree, everything is there. They expect everything to last forever. Yeah. yeah. So they're generous. They change direction many times. Um, they also don't like to get pinned down. Mm-hmm. And they don't prepare for the future. Why? Why would I? Oh, why? Why? They look at the... At the flowers are out, the grass is green. What's the problem? What's the problem? (laughs) Yeah, and they like bright colors too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they color, (laughs) and they can tell stories. Oh my god, you know, they can talk for England (laughs) Mm, and the rest of Europe too. You know, (laughs) so yeah, so those are the types. Yeah, so the book uses the seasons and the element to quickly get you into the type, but in a way that's intuitive. Because when I really, when I wanted to write the series, I wanted to write something that was simple. It was a quick read, but after you'd finish, you go, "Okay, there's wisdom in here." So you keep going back, yeah. and as you go back, you find more and you find more and yeah. you find more. So it, in that simplicity, you you've got something which is actually quite sophisticated. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, so I I really wanted to do that. So when you really want to do something, what do you do? You ask God, and then you get on with it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I did exactly that. Yeah. I asked God, and I got on with it, and I it 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 seems to it has worked. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, just reading it myself is just you, you can revert to it in so many different ways, so many different situations. You can know yourself from it. <laughs> so what? So, so who are you? What type of person uh, are you? I would like to say... <laughs> no, no, not what you'd like I to would, say. Who are you? At first instance, I'd probably say I'm spring. But then... No, you're not spring. I revert back and think, actually, I'm probably I, I winter. I think I know what you are. Would you say? I think you're automatic. <laughs> I think you're a perfectionist, mate. <laughs> I, oh. I think like you find it very hard to... <laughs> To switch off, and I don't. Yeah, yeah. You know, I just think you want things perfect. Like, even when we're starting up this podcast, yeah, you think about how long it took us to get from yeah, yeah. an idea to yeah. you needed to make sure that every single thing was <laughs> in here before we recorded our first ever. Which yeah. I appreciate because at the end of the day, something good comes from it. So I never see a perfectionist as being. It's not a bad trait at all. Everyone should chase perfection everyone wants the best out of what they're doing but i just feel it's definitely a negative sometimes yeah no it can be but i do feel as though more positive than negative in my opinion but you know that's why we have different people because yeah as you work with each other you really like recognize each other's strengths yeah and you make use of it because the thing about it is that you just don't have certain things imagine that you had all of those possibilities what the hell would you know what to do yeah that's so, true. Yeah. so God's and limited you. And you wouldn't appreciate you. it either. Yeah? yeah? Yeah. God has limited you mm. so that there are things you have that you can use and things you don't have that you have to depend upon somebody else for. Yeah. So it is, that's why we need to relate. So you have that strength and there are times when you come up against somebody and say, no, no, we have to start tomorrow. What, tomorrow? Yeah. Why have I done this? No, no, we're starting yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. Right? But if... If you've known each other for long enough and you have a sufficient trust, then you might go, you know what? Yeah, yeah, we could get it started tomorrow, right? And but then there, there are times when you've had that you you do it and you did it tomorrow, and you you fell flat in your faces. So the other guy goes, okay, maybe next time I should listen. 
right? Yeah. Well, and, it, and then it works. Mm, it, yeah. Maybe it worked. And then he said, okay. So then you go, okay. So that's also possible, right? So this, this interaction is what gives us growth, <laughs> okay? Yeah. Mm. Or we just get stuck in the way that we think the only way you can see the world. And that's one of the things about the method is that you see that different people see the world from... They, they're, they're speaking from a, they're singing from a different place. So what you learn to do is listen to their song. Yeah, because you don't sing like that. Mm. Yeah, one hundred percent. So yeah, yeah, you 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 are um, you are autumn and spring. Yeah, which is an interesting mixture. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's it's you know, I can't <laughs> you don't know which it depends on which yeah. side of the bed you wake up on. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> no, uh honestly, Alex, I wanna publicly thank you because that, that just understanding, like say, that initial um from our initial conversations helped me understand a lot and help help me out a lot personally and I hope people who've listened to this again in mm. you can relate to this and either in the future can mm. help them maybe go about understanding it or approach, approaching it in a different method. But um, yeah, uh, I think we're about almost run out of time. So really appreciate you coming in. Thank it's you very pleasure. much. Yes, Alex, absolute pleasure to meet you. Pleasure. Yeah, finally. I, I, know we've, good things. I know we've only touched the uh, you know, very basis of, of, of what you do, but hopefully we'll have another conversation in the future. Oh, I know it was a pleasure. Thank Going you for having me too. and I've enjoyed your company. It's been a good conversation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, so thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Really appreciate, appreciate it. it. Yeah. Uh, guys, please like, share and subscribe. But most importantly, enjoy the content.